Welcome to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, A.J. Hogue, where A.J.'s more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's A.J. with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. I am A.J. Hogue, author of Effortless English, Learn to Speak English Like a Native, and you speak English like a native. You speak English fluently. You speak English powerfully. You speak English confidently. When you join my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com, go to that website, EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Join, try my VIP program, and you will succeed. You will speak fluently and powerfully and effortlessly. Principles of Perfect Leadership is the topic today. We're taking a little break from the Tony Robbins Book Club. And this is actually from a different book from one of my very favorite people, uh, Dharma Pravartika Acharyaji. Okay, Acharyaji has been a guest on my show several times, and he's got a new book. And I just started reading this book, and it's really great. It's really great because it's a very, very different kind of leadership book. Very different. Most leadership books, I mean, almost all books about leadership, you know, in bookstores, on Amazon, you know, popular ones, most of them, you know, almost all, really, like 99 plus percent, are focused on business. They're written by business people. So, you know, and then maybe there's a, a percentage, some that are written by like kind of military people. But these are kind of the two most common viewpoints or types of business books. Business leadership books, right? Where the focus is on being a leader inside of a business, inside of a company. So kind of very money focused, right? And then the other one, military, right? And you can understand, you know, people are fighting in the military, they need leadership, of course. So that's all fine, but what if you are not really focused on being a leader in a company or, or in the military? Or what if you just don't like that mindset? Well, what I like about Acharyaji's book, Dharma Pravartika, it's called Principles of Perfect Leadership. It's in the title here on the podcast, on the show, Principles of perfect leadership. This is a book that focuses on a much deeper kind of leadership. It's a spiritual focus. So in this book, Acharya teaching about how to be a perfect leader, how to be a great leader, not just being persuasive, not just having a lot of good techniques, you know, to where you can use great techniques for psychology or something. His focus is on being a really, really, really strong and good person. That's the foundation. So his foundation is spiritual leadership, that the true leader, the best leader, is a spiritually strong and good person, a virtuous person, and that this is the best kind of leadership. These are the kind of leaders we really want, right? We have a lot of leaders in the world, you know, at, at the top and also just locally and in our businesses. We have a lot of people who have lots of little techniques of leadership, but they're not great people. They're not, they don't inspire us, right? They don't, they don't motivate us to do great things. In this book, he's teaching us how to be a different kind of leader, a, di a leader that inspires us. You know, the, the kind of leader he's talking about are people like, you know, Mahatma Gandhi, right? Um, and you can think of, you know, of other examples of this. And no, we can't all be at Gandhi's level, but we can be much stronger, better people. This is a kind of long-term kind of leadership where people will follow you not because you're super charismatic, 
not because you have perfect persuasion techniques, not because you're a perfect public speaker. They follow you because you are such a good person and they see this. They can see this and they want to be like you and they want to follow you because you lead from the front. You lead by showing a great example, by being a great example to people. This is the kind of leadership we need, for example, as parents. Because you can use psychology methods on your kids, okay? You can try it. You can use little tricks to, to get them to do things, okay? You can reward them and you can punish them and you can uh, use clever ways of speaking to, to get them to do what you want or to get them to, to be better kids, right? To behave better. But this is short term because eventually your kids, they're with you all the time, every day, and they're watching you, watching you, watching you all the time, and they're listening to you all the time, okay? And they see what kind of person you are. They see what you do, and they copy what you do. So eventually, what you say is not so important with your kids, okay? All these techniques are not so important, okay? Because your kids will actually see who you really are and they will follow who you really are and they will copy who you really are so for example if you're a very very angry person and a very you know uh uh you know let's say mean person not nice not kind you can tell your kids be kind be kind be kind be kind to other people but they see that you're not kind they see that you are not kind to other people and they see it every day they're probably going to copy you doesn't matter what you say. You can use every psychology trick you have, and you can l read all the books about all the different parenting tricks and techniques. But finally, they're just going to watch you and see you're not kind, and likely they're going to do what you do. It doesn't matter what you say so much. And this is why I like this book by uh, Acharyaji by Dharma Pravartika, because Principles of Perfect Leadership He's talking about this deeper level of leadership, about leading by being the... What Gandhi said it best. He said, be the change you want to happen, right? Be the change you want to see in the world. If you want a peaceful world, you first have to become a peaceful person. If you want a kind world or you want a more kind group or a more kind family, then you need to become a kinder person yourself first. If you want to be, if you want people around you to be healthier, like let's say you have a job at a, you work at a gym and you try to help people be more fit and more healthy. Well, you need to be fit and healthy yourself first and show a great example. And this will, people will look to you then. They'll ask you for advice, right? If you're fat and unhealthy, people are not going to ask you for advice about health and fitness and they're not going to listen to you probably you might have great knowledge you might really know about how to be healthy right you might have a, a phd a doctorate in uh in nutrition or exercise um it's called exercise physiology right in, in exercise science but people are still probably not going to listen to you because they're going to look at you and you're fat and you're unhealthy and they're not going to listen to you. They're going to look at somebody who is strong and healthy, who doesn't get sick all the time. And that's the person they're going to follow for health advice. That's the kind of leader they will look for, for health and fitness, right? And so this is, this is one, for example, with my own kids. I want my children to eat in a healthy way. I want them to be healthy and fit. I want them to be active and running around and, and lots of exercise, right? This is good for their life long term. Well, that means I've got to be this way. And I sometimes I don't eat great, you know? I, I'm okay. I'm not terrible, I guess, but uh, I'm not... I could be better. I could eat better. I could eat more health, healthily, right? So I'm trying to do this more. I'm pushing myself to be healthier. I've always been good about exercise. I love exercising and moving, so I have a... I can show them a good example for that. But... Uh, eating I'm my examples is probably so so <laughs> so I'm working on this myself because I know I can tell them be healthy be healthy eat healthy eat healthy but they're going to watch me
Now, luckily, my wife does eat in a very healthy way, so they, she's a very good example for them. All right, so this is a great book. I really recommend this book because this is the kind of leadership that I, uh, I personally prefer. I mean, these are the kind of people I want to follow as leaders, right? Uh, you know, it, it's, sometimes it's, it's, we look for people who are really good talkers, and it's easy to get caught by them and, f for a while, but then over time, over months, or sometimes over years, you begin to notice what they're actually doing and what they're really like. And the people who are still really good and you see that they're in their heart and in their mind and, and their life, they're really good, virtuous people, strong, good, virtuous people. Those are the people you will follow for years and years and years and years, right? So if you want to be a leader, even just a, at a small level, you want to be a better leader for your family as a parent, for example, or just among your friends, you know, even in a small group. This kind of leadership, I think anyone can do, right? To be a big, high leader with, you know, a very powerful person, yeah, maybe you need a lot of techniques and things, right? And maybe you need to be a naturally, we, we say alpha, right? Alpha meaning you're just naturally strong and, and everyone follows you naturally. But most of us are not like that. So this is a great, kind of leadership for all of us because we can all become better people and it makes you a better person and a happier person. So I'm going to read just one chapter because there's a nice chapter in this book. It's The chapters are super short. This is a really easy book to read. I like this uh, book from him because some of Acharya's books are very philosophical. I mean, this one is also, but uh, some of his books I, I don't uh, recommend. Well, I, I'll recommend them all, but I don't talk about them so much because I think the English is very difficult for some of you. But this one, I think anyone, any of you can read uh, and you can manage it because it's uh, the chapters are very short, it's, it's more direct and simple. I think this is a great one, uh, even for English learners, and it's a very practical topic. So this topic on this chapter, is a, it's, it's a... It's an idea that we talk about all the time. He's just saying it in a little different way, and he's talking about leaders. So let's go ahead and read it, and then we'll talk about it. Because it's, it's, this is an idea we've heard from uh, Tony Robbins. Many people talk about it. I talk about it a lot. So let's talk some more about it, because I love the way he talks about it here in this book and writes about it. Okay, here this is from Chapter 2 in the book. The name of the book is Principles of perfect leadership principles of perfect leadership principles of perfect leadership okay i'll read it it's just one paragraph in his own mind a true leader never truly loses a battle a true leader never really loses Okay, so immediately you say, well, how, how can that be true, right? Nobody wins all the time. Well, he explains it in the next sentence. The true leader, he either wins the battle or he learns and grows from his mistakes on the, bat, on the field of battle. This is something Tony talked about in the, in the book we've been reading, right? You never lose if you learn and grow. If you always learn and grow from, from, the ba from battles, from challenges, from difficulties, from problems, then you don't really lose, do you? Because at a deeper level, you still win, right? Maybe you don't achieve your goal, right? And maybe you try to start a business and the business fails. You have, to you have to close the business. So did you lose? Not really, not if you learned, because maybe, maybe you had your business was alive for one year, but maybe in that one year you learned so, so much about business, about marketing, about sales, about products, about customers and customer service, about IT, right? About um, all of these things. You've learned so much about business. Did you really lose? Yes, the business failed, but you did not lose because you learned so much and you, you, you grew so much. So at the end of the year, you're a much, much, much better business person. So maybe that one business will fail, 
But now you're ready to start another business and you're smarter and you're stronger and you know much, much, much more about business. The second time, you're more likely to succeed, much more likely. So you won. You still won because you grew and you learned so much. The people who lose are the people who are afraid to try, the people who are afraid of the battle, afraid of the fight, afraid of the challenge, afraid of the risk, and they do nothing. That's how you lose, by doing nothing. When you try and you do something, a new project, a new challenge, a new competition, whatever it is, you will always win if you learn and grow. All right, he continues. He says, this is another very important part. Very, very important part. Tony didn't talk about this as much, but so I think this is something we need to discuss. He, the leader, he or she, never gives in to despair or self-pity in the face of supposed failure. Very important. This is talking about your attitude, your mindset when you have a failure. Never give in to despair. Despair means like depression, sadness, like strong sadness, right? Or self-pity. What is self-pity? Self-pity was that you feel bad about yourself. Oh, I'm, I'm so sad. I'm so terrible. My life is terrible. Oh, poor me, poor me. That's self-pity. So he's saying a real leader, a true leader, does not do this. Even when the situation's very bad, even when there are failures, even when there are big problems, even when you don't achieve your goals, even when life gives you a lot of bad luck, you don't despair. You don't sit around saying, oh, poor me. My life is bad. My life is awful. Oh, this is terrible. Oh, everything's unlucky. That's not what a true leader does. Okay, instead, next sentence, he makes sure that he never replicates, never repeats his previous mistakes. Aha! Uh -huh. So instead of crying, he just decides, he or she decides, I will not repeat the same mistakes. All right? So when you have failures, you have problems, you don't cry and say, oh, poor me. Instead, you ask questions What happened? Why did I fail? What mistakes did I make? Did I make some mistakes? And you, you probably did. So you've got to look for them at first and find out and, and realize what mistakes did I make? What did I do wrong? Or what could I do better next time? That's the attitude. That's the difference between a true leader and someone who is going to always be unhappy, someone who's always going to lose. It's your attitude about failure is so important. It's the people who who continue to lose all the time, people who are, are constantly unhappy. They just feel bad about themselves. They just say, oh, poor me, poor me. My luck is bad. Everything's terrible. And they focus on the sadness. They focus on the failure. They focus on that. The true leaders, people who become happy, people who succeed long-term, people that others want to follow, they focus on learning and growing. When things are, go badly, they ask questions. What happened? Why did I fail? What could I do better? What mistakes did I make? They focus on themselves and making themselves better and smarter. Okay, so the true leader gives his all. He gives all effort to make sure that he has victory in later battles, subsequent battles. So instead of focusing on the past, boo-hoo, poor me, the leader focuses on the next battle. Okay, we lost that battle. That battle you know, was a failure. You learn from it. What mistakes did we make? What can we do better? Okay, now what's the next battle? What do I do next? Right. This is You'll see this in sports, the good teams. Most teams lose games. Even the champions lose games during the season. They lose games sometimes. Even the best teams, they lose sometimes. So what do they do, though? Do they cry when they lose? Oh, oh we lost a game. Oh, 
This is terrible. Oh, the referee cheated us. Oh, this is terrible. Oh, bad luck. Oh, our team. This is terrible. No, they don't. They just say they forget about it. Maybe they watch some video of the game. They say, what did we do wrong? What mistakes did we make? And then they focus on the next game and they forget about it. They learn and then they forget about the, the, the loss. They forget about the last game. And they're like, oh, okay, next week we play this other team. How are we going to beat that team? They focus on the next battle. They focus on the next challenge. They don't cry about the last game. They keep going forward. They learn and they move forward to the next battle. And finally, the last sentence, in this way, the true leader actually wins with every battle spiritually. Ah, and you can see here where uh, the writer, Dharma Pravartika, is focused differently than in business or others. Because he's saying that in life, our battles, our problems, our goals, in the deepest level, they're all spiritual. You could say religious if you want to, spiritual or religious, right? Because... In the end, if you make money or lose money, you know, it doesn't really matter because the at the deepest level, you know, the most important thing is our, you know, our spirit, our soul, our, our you know, your deepest psychology, your, your deepest fulfillment, your deepest happiness, right? Who cares if you win all your battles? Who cares if you get all your goals, but you're miserable and you're unhappy? Right? You get all your goals, you become a billionaire, everything you want you get, but you're unhappy. Did you really win? No, I don't think so. You, you lost, you're a loser because you're miserable and unhappy. On the other hand, if you fail and you fail and you fail to get your goals, you don't make a lot of money. You try to get something and you don't get it. But inside, deeply inside, you're a happy, fulfilled, strong, good person. You won spiritually. You're a winner. You have won. This is the real battle. It's the real battle. All the other goals are less important. It's, fi it's okay to have other goals. It's fine. But don't forget that the spiritual goals, the spiritual battles, this, this is the deepest level and the most important. This is what he's saying. And when you focus on learning and growing and you don't, cry about your when you lose and fail instead you just try to learn and grow as long as you're learning and growing inside deep inside you will become happier and stronger and a better person so you do win every single time you win all right so i just like it i love the way he says that it's really really nicely written and it's a great way to think about it And so is it, is it easy to do this all the time? Of course not. Sometimes we are weak and maybe you're just tired and we have moments. We all have moments. I have moments where we do want to cry about it and be pitiful. Oh, this sucks. This is terrible. Uh, right. But so what you do is, but you just got to stop yourself when you realize it. You stop yourself as soon as you can and change your mindset and focus instead on, okay, enough crying, enough complaining. What can I do better? What can I learn from this? What's the next battle, right? This is, you know, I always talk about jujitsu because I'm one of these crazy jujitsu nerds. I love jujitsu. And uh, that's what I love about jujitsu. One of the things when you're fighting in jujitsu, um, yeah, especially at my level <laughs> as a blue belt, is I, get, I lose all the time. And I win sometimes, right? Winning meaning tapping, you know, tapping. Right? So we're in sparring. I spar and I go and I spar one of the purple belts. Do I beat him? No. Okay. Almost always he's going to beat me and I end up tapping or maybe I don't tap, but he just, you know, I still am losing. I know I'm losing. I know he's better than I am. So what do I do? Do I cry about it and go home? Oh, that guy beat me again. Ah, he beats me every time. This sucks. Poor AJ. Of course not. It's ridiculous. What do I do? I go home and I think, how did he beat me this time? <laughs> right? That's exactly what did he do? What, what, what mistakes did I make? I'm thinking about it. I'm kind of remembering the fight in my head. What, uh, I tried to do that and it didn't work. Why didn't it work? Why does this never work on that guy? That guy never works against him. What is he doing differently? Right? And so I see, I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it when I'm going home. Oh, maybe this and I'll think of a new idea. Oh, maybe I need to change my, how I'm grabbing him. Right. And maybe I come home and I'll watch some jujitsu videos about the technique I'm trying. And then, and then I'll, I'll say, oh, I forgot to do that. 
maybe that's why it didn't work, right, against that guy. Next time, right, this is where you focus on the next one. Next time, I'll try the, you know, the new detail. Next time, I'll try that in a different way. Maybe next time, I'll get him. Maybe next time, it'll work, right? Or maybe it won't, <laughs> but I'll try. I'm focusing on the next time. I'm not going to keep crying about it. I'm going to keep losing to these guys because they're always getting better too. And they're ahead of me and they have more experience than I do. And uh, that's life. It's going to happen. Now, of course, sometimes I, uh, there are guys who are less, have less experience than me now. Some of the newer guys. And sometimes I, I make them top and I'm beating them. So they should do the same. They go home. They shouldn't cry about it. Oh, poor me. AJ beat me. They're going to go home and, and think, oh, what did he do? How can I beat him next time? Right? So this is, I, I love jujitsu because this is every week this happens to me, <laughs> several times a week this is happening again and again and again. And it's a good thing for life. It's a good attitude for all of life, not just uh, fighting in jujitsu. This is a good attitude for business. It's a good attitude uh, in your relationships. It's a good attitude for all your goals, right? And especially at the deepest level, spiritually. All right, let's get into our questions and comments live. We are live on YouTube now. Oh, lots of people saying hi. Yeah, like uh, Elbert Brazil says, examples are much better than just advice. Exactly. You know, I don't know about you, but like, like uh, certainly in my personal life, like with my family, nobody will take my advice. Right. No, nobody takes advice. Uh, I, it's weird. Like people like you guys, uh, some of you will listen to my advice and you'll try some things that I say. But with family members, it's like I, I know a lot of you have the same experience. You try to help someone in your family and they just will not listen to you. Even if you are a total expert, they won't listen to you. <laughs> They'll listen to someone else. Right. But they won't listen to you because you're their son or their daughter or their cousin or something. It's weird. I don't know why. It's uh, strange. But um, so just giving advice and talking often doesn't work, especially pe with people close to us. But what works better is uh, sh just showing them by example, just being the kind of person they would like to be. And then maybe they will come to you and ask you. It's better when they come to you and ask for advice, right? Instead of just giving advice to people, nobody really wants to hear it usually. Uh, but when they come to you, then you know they're definitely wanting to hear it and they're more likely to listen. Miguel Storm says, Dear AJ Hogue, you're an excellent coach. Thank you. Your voice has a power and motivation. Miguel from Argentina. Thank you so much, Michael. That's really nice. Miguel, sorry. Marcos says hello from Brazil. He's a teacher in Brazil. Okay, let's just, uh, when will I visit Argentina? I would love to visit Argentina and I'd love to do a South America. I've never been to South America. So I would uh, love to go down. And even I would love to do, uh, I've been to, uh, I think Honduras is the, well, Honduras and Guatemala. That's as far south as I've been. So uh, in terms of the Americas, I'd love to do see Nicaragua, Panama, uh, Costa Rica. And I would like to go down and, you know, Colombia, Brazil, Argentina, etc. I would love to do a tour of... Actually, you know, I, I'm quite inspired by the Motorcycle Diaries, you know, the uh, Che Guevara um, book. They made a movie about it where he and his friend, uh, uh, they started in Argentina and then they, they drove their motorcycle up to the north. I think they went to Colombia. Anyway, I always have this romantic idea of riding a motorcycle or something around South America. We'll see. Someday. Maybe. Uh, Nigel Shu says hi from China. Yeah, Abdullah says the beginning of success is failure. And many times you'll see this in your life. If you look back, we don't usually realize when it's short term, right? But uh, sometimes if you look back several years in your life, 
you can see like you make you you're better you succeeded and you can sometimes find the seed right the little seed the beginnings of your success you can find there was a failure that motivated you somehow or taught you something and then eventually that led you to succeed long term we can see this sometimes long term but it's hard to see it right now in the moment right because we get emotional Yeah, like uh, Elbert, Elbert is uh, saying, you don't need to talk about your methods, you don't, my methods, age, effortless English. Once people see your improvement, they will follow you. Yeah, that's the best advice I get. And this is my best, uh, I guess, testimonial for people is, uh, yeah, of course I say effortless English is great. Do this, do that, follow this. And, and may, some people listen, but the best thing is just look at my students. That's all. Just look at other effortless English students that have succeeded. You can see it. You don't have to say anything. You say, wow, people in your life, they'll see your, your English is better, much better. How did you do it? That's when they ask you, when they see that you've improved. So you don't have to tell them all the time, Everless English is great. Oh, do it, do it, do it, do it. Just show them. And then when they ask you, why is your English so much better? You're improving a lot suddenly. What happened? And you say, ah, I'm using this. And that's more powerful and more persuasive. Arun Kumar says, I like a girl. I rarely see her. I found her name on a college website. She thought that I was stalking her. <laughs> oh, no, because I found her blog and I subscribe. She doesn't want to talk. I s emailed her saying, sorry, no reply. What to do? Move on. <laughs> Next. <laughs> That's what you should do, Arun. Move on. Focus on girls that uh, that you can actually meet face to face. Go up and talk to them. Let that one go. That's nice. Richard says, AJ Hogue is my motivational speaker and I followed him. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, Arun Kumar, in a, with, with a nice way to say this, says, Every father should remember one day his son will follow his example not his advice indeed they will follow you you're what you are not what you say it's good to remember as a parent uh, and uh, it puts a, it puts a very positive uh pressure on us as parents i know i feel it <laughs> that uh you know you suddenly kind of start looking at your own behavior and what you're doing and you realize oh well man i've got some bad habits i maybe some things that are not so great do i really want my kids to copy this and then you try to start changing them and it's not always easy right so uh but this is good it's one of the great things about becoming a parent if you're if you really love your kids which you should then um they actually your children will inspire you to be a better person you want to be a better person for them and that's good. We'll never be perfect, of course, but we do our best. Yeah, and Arun, I'm going to read one more from Arun because uh, it really fits with what uh, Dharma Pravartika Acharyaji wrote in his book, Best, the best leadership lessons can be learned from the ancient scriptures and spiritual books. Indeed, and this is really what this book is. Principles of Perfect Leadership, again, is the name of the book. Uh, and this is really where he's, what, this is uh, his viewpoint, his, his main viewpoint, and how he's teaching leadership in this book, that exact attitude. Instead of just what's the latest psychological trick. Right. A lot of business books. I've read so many books about leadership uh, and most of them are based on uh, techniques, I would call it. Right. Techniques, not who you are as a person. It's just techniques. How do you get someone to do something? You know, what do you say to them? How do you kind of persuade them or trick them or pressure them to do something? That's what a lot of leadership books are about. This one's very different. And this is one that's a lot deeper. I think more powerful because of that. So get the book, by the way. Get the book. It's uh, you can get the ebook. I got the ebook, so you can just download the ebook. Uh, I got it from Amazon.com. I'm sure it's on other ebook sites also. Uh, 
Nice. Wesley Nascimento says, uh, my name is Wesley. I'm from Brazil. I love your stories. It helped me a lot to develop my speech. Thank you, teacher. Thank you so much. And congratulations. You know, again, like you're the most persuasive for Effortless English. The reason people join Effortless English is they see other people succeed like Wesley. And then they say, oh, I guess I'll try it. That's what I found. Ah, Arun says, I want you to vi visit Vrindavan. Let me know once you plan it. Yeah, I, I, I hope so someday. I'm, we'll see. I talked to my wife already. It probably would just be me. I'd leave the kids behind here. Uh, and, and my wife would stay with the kids and I would just go down for probably like a week for a, for a pilgrimage. We'll see. Hey, Pablo. Good to see Pablo Robles as always. He, he says, I started listening to AJ from Argentina. I couldn't speak English at that time. Now I'm living in Canada, working for a big company as a technical trainer, fluent in English. Thank you so much, AJ. Whoa, I didn't know that about you, Pablo. Wow, I, did, I, I didn't know you were in Canada working at a, you know, at a company. I didn't know you were a technical trainer. So there's an example of a great success story using effortless English. Fantastic. Wow, that's impressive. It's good to know. I just learned that about you. Look, Palm, who is a supporting member here on YouTube, says, in some cases, the father is not good to follow. Good point, and we'll talk about that. Therefore, the children will be opposite their dad and try to be a better person, especially my case. I, I was going to say that w with the last comment. I was thinking about this exact point. It's a very good point that you will see this, and this is good. Some people, you're like, yeah, what if my parents you know, were not good people? And this is, you know, people have bad karma, we would say, that where they're born into a, a family, they have no choice, and they, the parents may be, you know, like an alcoholic or a drug addict or terrible stuff, right? But you see that, yeah, what can happen is they can use that bad person as an, we call a negative role model, right? A positive role model, someone you follow, you want to be like them, you want to copy them. A negative role model, you want to be the opposite. So if they're a drug addict, you decide I'll never take drugs. If they're an alcoholic, you decide I'll never drink. And we do see this. And this is um, uh, now, you know, we know we see both sides and this is what happens. Either, you know, like you can see maybe a family where the parents are alcoholics, for example. Maybe they have uh, several kids. Some of the kids will follow the parents and become alcoholics also. But some kids... You know, I don't know why. Maybe they have some other positive things in their life, some other positive influence or just some spiritual intuition. I don't know. But some of the kids will decide, no, I will never be like them. Right. I will never drink, I'll never take drugs. And they become the opposite of the parents. They go the complete opposite. They use them as a negative. And this is what this is how you can use even bad people uh, in a positive way. You can actually learn from bad people you know failures people who are very negative you can see the the pain and the problems they cause and you can decide oh i'm not doing that <laughs> right and you can learn from it so you don't make the mistakes they did so it's a very good point but as a parent if you're a father or mother of course you don't want to it's 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 much better to be the positive example as a parent because the kids are most likely to follow you Again, if you see if there's alcoholic parents and they have five kids, usually most of them will become alcoholics. Not all of them, not always, but the positive, you know, the, the, they're more likely to copy you than to go the opposite direction. Some can't, you can, there's still hope. But uh, if you are a person in a leadership position, such as being a father or mother, you want to try to, of course, be the best person you can. Helder Osorio says, do we really have leadership in this world? Well, this is one of the things uh, in the book that uh, that the book talks about, principles of perfect leadership, that in fact, right now we have a crisis. If you're talking about, well, not just at the highest level, I would say at all levels of society, we have a crisis of leadership now where no, in indeed, we do not have good people leading us, which is why there's so, so much 
you know, it's, everything's falling apart. <laughs> yeah, certainly in the West. So, uh, yeah, there you go. Okay. Ah, Nguyen Trung says, I love the topic of life after death. I hope you'll come back to this topic. Thanks from Vietnam. Oh, yeah, great. I'll, I'll do it again. I'll do another show because it's a favorite of mine as well. Uh, really, uh, those, those um, near-death experiences are incredible. Incredible. Very inspiring and powerful. Okay. Uh, Azizula Mohammadi says, uh, Hi, Coach. Glad to see you back. If we observe ants, little insects, the ants, we could realize the hardworking quality by their movements, but they never tell us about this quality. Yeah, right. I know. Exactly. We can learn even from, you know, from nature. We can be inspired and learn. So this is a good point. Astronomia Escrituras says, let's go crazy speaking English, putting our shoulders back, our chest up, our eyes up, spinning around like crazy. Let's rock with the best English teacher ever. <laughs> Thank you. That's a nice, powerful comment. I like it. Thank you. Okay, whoop, sorry, my comments are jumping around on my screen. Let me try to, they're coming in quickly here. <laughs> okay, this is an interesting comment. Um, why don't you talk about Michael Jackson? Because I don't know what he said in his songs. I'm not really a Michael Jackson fan, for one. Um, so, uh, I don't know, music, it's hard to decide what people are saying in songs anyway, because uh, often there's no obvious meaning. Okay. Sometimes there are. Some songs are very kind of direct and they're like a story. But a lot, a lot, a lot of songs are not. They're just almost random thoughts or images or ideas. And they're all together. And, and you're just like, what is this song about? I don't know. <laughs> so it's not great for learning English, I think. It's fine if you like the song. But uh, not so good for English learning. That's why I don't really use songs much. Plus, the pronunciation can be changed in a song where it's not the normal, um, it's not the normal, uh, how to say, um, common conversational pronunciation. Okay. Claudia says it's always a personal choice. Mm-hmm. Hussein said, I want you to say my name. <laughs> Abdullah. Good night, Hussein Abdullah. Uh, hey, there's Adam Kamaloff, another uh, long, you know, regular person, listener. I finished your Power English course. Great. Now I speak English. AJ, I want to listen to your course again because I was really enjoying it. Yeah, you can definitely listen to it again. You can repeat it again if you like it. You'll still get benefits from it. So absolutely. You like Power English. You like, you can listen to your old VIP lessons. Any of those you want, repetition is always great. So if you enjoy the topics, listen again. Yeah, I like how Amina says this. Hi from, she says, hi coach from Afghanistan. Great leaders don't just manage. They clarify the future for their team and customers. Uh, this is a good point, which again in this, in the book is, uh, he brings up in the book as well, uh, Dharma Pravartika brings up in the book, Principles of Perfect Leadership, that, uh, yeah, there is indeed a difference between just managing, being a manager, and leadership. And what's the difference? Because in biz sometimes in business books, they sort of confuse the two. Management is just kind of day-to-day -day organization, right? It's just... To be sure, things get done, and managing, managing and management is important, right? So you've got a team, and you need a manager so that, you know, they have a goal, but there's a lot of work to do each day, and they have lots of little things that need to get done. Well, a manager makes, they help to 
motivate the team and organize the team so that all of those little steps get finished. That's a manager. It's more focused on short term. The leader is the one who has the long term vision. The leader is the one that decides the big goals, right? And gets everybody inspired about the large goals. And then the managers help the team get to those goals step by step each day. That's the difference. So we need both. But I think we have plenty of managers in the world. Uh, we don't have so many great leaders, inspiring leaders that have that think big and think long term. We live in a world now where everything's short term, short term, right now, right now, 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 next week, maybe one month from now. People don't think beyond that. And so they, they get, they're very active and they're doing lots of stuff, but they're going in the wrong direction. So it's not, if you, if you have a great management, and everyone's working hard and you're getting a lot finished, a lot done, but you're moving the wrong direction, you're chasing the wrong goals, then you end up happy, you end up having long-term failure, long-term unhappiness because you're, you're trying to achieve the wrong things that will not give you long-term happiness, that will not give you long-term success. That's why leadership is important, having the big vision, the long-term vision. And... Yeah, I know that, you know, like uh, in the book, he, Dharma Pravartika talks about, you know, that, of course, ideally, a, a good leader is also a good manager. But I find that they're very different mindsets myself. And it's hard to, f it's hard for the same person to do both. Right? I find that people are, if they're sh very strong leaders, maybe they're not such great managers. And if they're not great managers, if they're great managers, they're maybe not very good leaders. And occasionally you get those great people who can do both and they're great at both. They're special people, but uh, often, like I'm a terrible manager. <laughs> terrible. Uh, so uh, I would, you know, I think I do better in the leadership role, a little bit more long-term and bigger picture, big picture thinking we say, right? Uh, I'm terrible at trying to get people to do little tasks every day and you know, it's just, some, it's just a weakness. It's, it's, I'm not very good at it. And I don't like it. So it's probably why I'm bad at it. Oh, cool. Luis Chavez says, I need to improve my English in the next three months for a job interview. Good luck. Your channel was a perfect find for my purpose. Do you recommend the original or Power English course? I'm intermediate level. I think for, for in, job interview, go with Power English. Power English. Or better yet, maybe uh, it's it's a little advanced, but you might try the business English course might be even better for you. In fact, for the job interview, business English course, Luis, is the best one. If it's difficult, just repeat it. Take Go slowly with each uh, lesson. S you know, study, learn the vocab, take your time. But the business English course is really the best one for job interviews. Definitely. Business, it's called Business English Conversations. You'll find it on my website. Mario Lima says, I've been following you for 10 years. I like your many stories on the podcast. Wow, 10 years. That's awesome. Regards from Hudson in Argentina. Yeah, like uh, Ivan Gomez says, leadership is important even in family especially in family. And that's why all of us really can and uh, probably need to be leaders at some level. You know, most of us are not maybe natural leaders, right? We're not going to lead a big team of people, maybe. Maybe we're not going to be managers at, at a job. That's okay. But in our personal lives, especially family life, almost all of us will need to be leaders of some kind, especially if we when we become parents, right? Every parent's a leader. So we all need this at some level, right? We all need this, at least in a personal life. And then maybe you go on and you become a leader in other areas too. But at the very least, <laughs> almost everybody will need to do it in their family. Uh, hello, AJ. How can I uh, return my English at the age of 47? I haven't spoken English for 25 years. Is there an easy way to do it? Thanks, Hamid from Uzbekistan. Well, just judging your writing is very good. 
So what I would say, Hamid, is to do lots and lots of listening every day. Try to listen to English two, three hours every day. Uh, you can just listen to my podcast, you know, or, or other YouTube channels or podcasts. Find something at a good level for you that's not too difficult. If you want to, you could get one of my courses. Maybe I'd say, just looking at your comment, you write very well. Power English or VIP, you could do that. But I think mostly to sort of reactivate, to make your English come back alive, you need lots and lots of listening for maybe a few months. Do lots of listening, several hours every day. And then after that, try to start talking to people. Kodiak says, what's the difference between understand and understood? Understood is past tense. Alexander Oviedo says, you're the perfect leader, AJ. Greetings from Mexico City. Thank you. Oh, yeah, Arun Kumar says, I cleared all my interviews by listening to AJ Hoag's interview videos. Yeah, I got some video. Uh, I have some videos on my channel, YouTube channel, also about job interviews. So you could watch those and those are free. But really, you know, the Business English course is the best. Like the whole course talks about that and other things. It's really, really, really strong for that. Amineva Albina says, should a woman be a leader? Isn't it from... Isn't it for men only? I think it just depends on the situation. I mean, every mother is a leader. Absolutely. So right in the family, 100%. You've got a father and a mother. It's, you, they're both leaders. You know, and then other areas of life, we see leadership, women and men both. So I think, you know, I think that uh, maybe in certain situations, men uh, are more naturally strong as leaders. And in other situations, maybe women are more naturally strong as leaders. And they may have a somewhat different leadership styles. Right. It's hard to say. It's such a general question. All right, it's about 52 minutes. I think we're going to go. I'm going to take, uh, let's say I'll take another question and then I'll be done. Just looking here. Okay, this is, uh, we'll, we'll end with Wen Trung again. He says, I do exercise every day. I run, I bike, and I swim. Wow, are you doing a triathlon? I do marathons. Awesome. But my boy is quite lazy. How can I persuade him to follow me? Thank you for your advice. Okay. So I'm talking your son, I guess. Um, it depends on how old he is. So I'm not quite sure how old he is. Ideally, you start young. Okay. So if he's young, then you just take him out with you. All right. So you go for a bike ride with him. Obviously, uh, if he's, say, five years old, he can't go biking lots of kilometers with you okay you have to you're gonna have to do your training separately uh but you gotta find a little extra time for him and you say hey you want to let's do a triathlon together and uh you take him and you do a little, little bit of swimming and you know just a short amount just enough for him no, don't exhaust him just just make it fun at the at in the young ages everything's about fun so i'll give you a more specific example for me because it's uh uh i for jujitsu I want my kids to do jujitsu for self-defense and anti-bullying. So that's why I want them to do it, not just because I like it. Um, so at their age now, three, I'm not pushing them to do a bunch of jujitsu techniques. We just play around. We just wrestle around on the ground. They did one uh, lesson with my instructor, Tiago. And again, it's mostly games and fun and play. It's just about making the experience of exercise in this case, jujitsu, enjoyable and fun and like a game and playful. There's no goals. There's nothing about trying to be good at it. It's just enjoy it, right? And I think that's true, certainly up at least until age seven, eight. And, and what you do is in terms of like, when do you encourage your kids to try to get more skill or push themselves more? I think you wait, let it come from them, okay? Because maybe they never care about it, right? Like, so jujitsu with my kids. Uh, of course, I'll st we'll start eventually. They'll get older, maybe age five, six, seven. They'll, they'll learn the actual self-defense techniques, the basic stuff. 
and we'll practice that. And after that, if they want, then it's their decision. It's like, I'll, I'll see if they love it. And they're like, I want to do more. And how do I become better? Well, then I'll try to help them do that and can encourage that. But, you know, maybe one of them doesn't care about that. Maybe the other one wants to do uh, dancing or swimming or something else more. And I'm not going to force them to become a jujitsu champion. <laughs> right. I'll just I just want them to have enough to defend themselves beyond that. Um, you know, I'll, I'll let I'll let them find their own interest. But I but the main thing is I take them outside every day and they're active every single day. Right. Every day we go to the park or we today we're going to a little climbing wall and they can climb around. It's, there's only three, but they're a little small climbing wall and they can crunk. One of my kids loves climbing and the other one likes running. So like my boy, he's he just wants to run. He doesn't care about climbing the climbing wall. He just wants to run, 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 run everywhere. Da -da -da -da. So I'm always chasing him around everywhere. And then my daughter loves climbing. She likes running too, but she loves to climb. So uh, you just kind of get, get out with them and just encourage them to try lots of different things. So if they're already like teenagers, it becomes much harder. If they're teenagers and they're lazy and they're not active physically, now you're trying to start something at a, at a later age, like some very bad habits are already stronger. So I think still the overall idea is the same is don't turn it, don't make it something like it's the military where it's unpleasant. You got to find some sort of activities that you can do with them and do it with them that they find, not you, they find interesting and fun. So it might be something just like playing badminton a little bit, right? Something that's just simple like that. Uh, maybe maybe they don't like the triathlon stuff. Maybe some people hate that kind of stuff. They really don't like running and swimming and biking. Well, maybe it would be weightlifting. Maybe they want to go the other direction and, and they would enjoy weightlifting. Hey, you want to try weightlifting? Let's go to the gym. Let's try it. Or let's buy some kettlebells and do some kettlebell stuff at home. Get strong. Uh, or maybe it's just some games. So you just gotta you're gonna have to find what they like. Uh, and, and it's gonna, it's just a process of trying lots of things and enjoying together. And most of all, making it more like a game and enjoyable. Uh, the, the biggest thing I've seen with older people, people who are adults who hate exercise is they think of it as something unpleasant somewhere in their life, early in their life, they decided that exercise was painful and unpleasant. And then this belief became stronger and stronger and they become adults and they just sit on their butt and they become weak. So, and then the, it's the opposite. People who love exercise, like me, we think the opposite. We think exercise is enjoyable. It's fun. Oh, exercise is fun. It's enjoyable. It's great. Oh, I, I have to do it because it's, if I sit on my butt, I get really bored and feel terrible, right? So that's the most important thing with kids is create the mindset that running around and moving your body is enjoyable and fun. So do not make it like the army and uh, make them do push-ups and pull-ups and you know all this stuff and where they hate it. This is probably what happens to people that hate it because maybe they went to school and they had the, the physical education class and the gym teacher was really mean and and it was and the other kids laughed at them and it was just all painful experiences and they think oh exercise is painful and unpleasant right so you got to create it where no no exercise is not painful and but it's fun so if you want to go like swimming don't make them swim laps back and forth back and forth that is kind of boring for a lot of people some people like it i like it but some people don't just splash and play just let them splash around. Just moving around and splashing and playing in the water is still very good exercise, right? And almost all kids like that. So this is the point. Find it, find things that and make it fun and enjoyable. So you, because the important thing is not that they become some champion in some area. The important thing is they learn to enjoy moving their body so that they're healthy as adults and their whole lives, you want them to be as healthy and strong as possible because this is good for them and they'll have better lives. So that's why we do it. All right, guys, that's all. S let's uh, just to summarize the name of today's book, Principles of Perfect Leadership. Get the book. I'll type it in the comments on YouTube. Principles of 
Perfect. Leadership by Dharma Pravartaka. Pravartaka? Pravartika? Anyway, something like that. Um, so I highly, highly, highly re recommend this book. We'll do more sections from this book. I'm just starting to read it myself. So as I find sections that I like, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll talk about them. And we'll, of course, come back to the Tony, Tony Robbins book and we'll finish that too. Okay, as always, speak English fluently and powerfully. Speak English effortlessly. Join my VIP program. Or if you have a job interview, if you needed to do a job interview in English, get my Business English Conversations course at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Go to the website. That's where you buy my courses. You get my courses at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Lots of love to you. See you next time. Bye for now.